Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the future value of annuities. And so what exactly is an annuity? Well, putting it simply, an annuity is a series of periodic payments. So for example, let's suppose that you have 10 payments of $100 that you need to make over the course of 10 years. And so then you would pay each of those payments one at a time at the end of each of those 10 years. And so then let's say you make those payments to an account that has an interest rate of 5%. How would you determine the future value of those 10 payments or deposits that you're making over the course of those 10 years? Well, if we were to use our currently known methods of calculating the future value of investments, we would go through the calculation like this. We would say that the future value is equal to your first deposit or payment of $100 and that would be compounded for the amount of time that it's going to be in your account. Now remember, you're making 10 of these payments over the course of 10 years, and so that first payment you make is going to be in your account until the end of those 10 years. And so if you're making this payment at the end of year one, it's going to be in there for another nine years. And so we'll multiply it by one plus your interest rate, which would be 0 0.05, so 1.05, and then that will be to the power of nine. And then we would add our second payment of $100, and that would be paid or deposited at the end of year two, and so that would only be in your account for eight years, and so we would multiply that by 1.05 to the eighth power. And so then you could see how we could continue on with this until our final payment. And so I'm gonna skip a few of these calculations here, but if we were to continue on, we could go to our last two payments. And so if we look at our payment at year nine, we'll have $100 again, and then we'll be multiplying it by 1.05 to the first power, right? Because this is our payment in the ninth year. And so there's only one more year left that it needs to be compounded for. And then at the end of that 10th year, we have our last $100 that isn't going to be compounded at all. It's just put into the account and then our 10th year is up. And so then in between here from our payment at the end of year two to our payment at the end of year nine, we would have all the other payments in between. And so we could certainly do this. We could calculate the future value of this scenario using this method. But admittedly, that's a lot of work, right? That's not exactly the quickest calculation to do. We would rather have an easier way to do this. And so in order to figure out the future value of a scenario like this, or the future value of an annuity, a series of payments, let's recall a concept that you might have come across during calculus, and that is a geometric series. And so consider this series here, we're starting at k equals zero, and we're going up to a value of n for some constant a multiplied by r to the power of k. Right, and so this is our geometric series, and if we were to write it out, it would be equal to this, we would have a, our constant, multiplied by r to the zeroth power plus r to the first power plus r squared, and then we would have a bunch of terms all the way up until we get to r to the nth power. So we'd have the term before that, we'd have r to the n minus one power, and then you would have your r to the n power, right? So whatever that value of n is for our series, that is where it would end. And so this is a geometric series, which as you can see is a little similar to what we have up here, but this is helpful because we know a formula that allows us to calculate the sum of a geometric series like this one. And so if I clean up our work a little bit here, we can write that this will be equal to a times one minus r to the power of n plus one divided by one minus r. This will give us the sum of our geometric series. And this is a formula that you would have learned in calculus. And so what this tells us, if we wanna find the sum of a series like this, we just take our value of whatever is being raised to that power and take it to the power of our bound n plus one and then divide it by one minus that value that we are taking to that power. And so if we go back to our future value scenario here for an annuity, how could we take what we know about a geometric series and apply it to this scenario? Well, I want you to notice something here. If we were to rewrite this last term, let me do that here, we would have plus 100 times 1.05 to the zeroth power, right? Because anything to the power of zero is gonna be equal to one. So this is just 100 times one. And so this is the same thing as what we had written before where we just had plus 100. And so if you see, this is going to kind of match up with our geometric series here. And so let me show you what I mean by reordering our terms here. So really our future value would be equal to 100 times 1.05 to the power of zero plus 100 times 1.05 to the first power. And then we could skip to the end where we have 100 times 1.05 to the ninth power, right? So we'd have all the other payments in between our first payment 
and our second to last payment, right? We just changed the order of our payments here. We took our last payment and made it the first term in our sequence. And we took our first payment and made it the last term in our sequence. And so now what we can see is that there is a similarity between this series and this geometric series. Notice that we have this constant A that is pulled out of these terms. Let's do that for this and then let's see what happens. And so if I clean up our work a little bit here, then we can see that this future value would be equal to 100 times 1.05 to the power of zero plus 1.05 to the power of one. And then we would continue to add up to 1.5 to the power of nine. And so if we were to rewrite this series here using this notation, then we would say that this is equal to the sum from k equals zero to n, which in this case is going to be nine, right? That is the last value of n or the last power out of all of these terms. That's the highest one. So we'd be going to nine and then we'd have 100 times 1.05 to the power of k. And so now that we were able to rewrite our annuity calculation here or our future value of our annuity with this series notation, we can now use this formula to calculate its sum because this is a geometric series. And so let's do that next. All right, so now we're ready to use this formula here to find the sum or the future value of our annuity. And so before we do that, let's just quickly note what each of these letters represent in our example here. So our n is equal to nine and our a or our constant being multiplied by the term with the power is 100, right? A is going to be 100. And then our value of r or our term being raised to a power is 1.05. So r is equal to 1.05. And then of course, k is the same in both cases. So there's nothing to make note of there. And so then we can say that this is going to be equal to a, which in this case is 100 multiplied by one minus r, which is 1.05 to the power of n plus one. So we're gonna have 1.05 to the power of nine plus one, right? And so then this would be divided by one minus r, which is 1.05. And so then if we plug this into our calculator, we would find that this would be equal to $1,257.79. And so this would be the value of your annuity after those 10 years if you're making 10 payments of $100 at the end of each of those years with an interest rate of 5%. And so what we did here is we shortened the process of calculating all of those different terms of our future value. Remember we had 100 times 1.05 to the ninth power, then 100 times 1.05 to the eighth power. And we did that all the way until we got to just 100 times 1.05 to the zeroth power. Instead of going through all of those calculations, we just had this one formula that we could use to find this future value. Now, that's not to say that that process we did before wouldn't get you this same value. It definitely would. You could go through and do all of those terms, but it's not as efficient because it would take you a lot longer to do. And so this is going to be a very nice calculation that we are going to want to use. And so what we can actually do here is we can actually generalize this to any future value situation dealing with an annuity. And so what I mean by that is that we can say that the future value of an annuity is going to be equal to whatever our payments are, x multiplied by one minus one plus i, our interest rate, to the power of n divided by one minus one plus i. And n in this case is your number of years or your number of payments, right? We said that we were making 10 payments of $100 over the course of 10 years in our example. And look at our power up here, it was nine plus one. That's going to be the case in any scenario just like this one. And so now we have a generalized form for the future value of an annuity. But we can actually make this a lot nicer. And so let's work on doing that next now that we have this result to work with. All right, so now that we have this general formula to represent the future value of an annuity, I wanna go through and simplify this so that is the nicest possible formula that we can use and actually leads to a nice notation, which I'll show you at the end. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to simplify the denominator here. So I have that this is equal to x times one minus one plus i to the power of n, but then we'll have one minus one minus i, right? We distribute this negative into each part of this quantity. So we have negative one and negative i. And so then we have one minus one. And so that's going to cancel out and we'll just have negative i on the bottom. And so if we rewrite this, we'll have that this is equal to x times one minus 
1 plus i to the power of n divided by negative i. But I'm not really a big fan of having that negative in the bottom. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by a form of 1 of negative 1 divided by negative 1. And that's going to make this a little bit nicer to work with. You'll see why in a moment. Because if we go through with this multiplication, we'll have that this is equal to x times negative 1 plus 1 plus i to the power of n divided by positive i. Right, this i became positive because it was negative i multiplied by negative 1. And then each of these terms were negated by this negative 1. So we now have a negative 1 here. And we have that this term is positive. So now we can rearrange these two terms. And we'll find that the future value would be equal to x times 1 plus i to the n power minus 1 divided by i. And so finally, this is going to be our nice form for the future value of an annuity. And so I'm going to clean up my work here, and then we're going to talk about the notation for this formula. All right, so now that we found this, there's one more thing I want to show you, and that is what the common notation for the future value of an annuity looks like. We will typically rewrite this part using a different notation. And so what you'll find is that this is going to be equal to that deposit that you're making at the end of each year, x, multiplied by this. We're going to have s, and then n, and then this bar, and then i. And this looks really weird at first, but this is just the notation for an annuity in a future value scenario. What this tells us is that we are looking at the future value of an annuity with n number of payments or the number of periods n, right? They're going to be the same. And then i, your interest rate. And so this right here represents this formula. And so in calculations, you're going to see this notation. But what it really means is this calculation right here, this formula. This is just the notation for this formula. And so the bottom line here is that this notation is going to be equal to 1 plus i to the power of n minus 1 divided by i. That is the future value of an annuity that has a $1 payment for every period n. If it's going to be more than $1 per period, you would multiply by that amount, right? We represented that with x in our case, but if x is equal to 1, then this is the future value of your annuity. All right, so now let's look at an example of using this formula. All right, so here's our example. We have Fred invests $300 per year for a total of 20 years into an account that has an annual effective interest rate of 7%. How much does Fred have after the last $300 is invested? All right, and so this is going to be a future value of an annuity scenario, right? An annuity is a series of periodic payments. And in this case, Fred is investing or paying $300 per year for a total of 20 years. And then we want to know how much does he have in that account after the last $300 is invested. And so we're looking at a value in the future, not the past. So we know we're looking at a future value of this annuity or this series of periodic payments. And so if we write down what we know, we know that we have an interest rate of 7%, which is going to be equal to 0 0.07. And we know that he is investing $300 per year for a total of 20 years. So n is going to be equal to 20 in that case. And so then let's use our future value of an annuity formula. We know that the future value is going to be equal to some payment x multiplied by s for a certain number of periods with an interest rate i. And then in this case, we can plug in what we know. And we know that this is going to be equal to 300 times s and then 20 years or 20 payments, and our interest rate is 0 0.07, right? So this makes sense because Fred is investing $300 per year for a total of 20 years, which means he has 20 payments, right? 20 years, a payment each year results in 20 payments over 20 years, and the amount is 300, so we can multiply that 300 by this future value of an annuity formula, and then of course our interest rate is 7%. And so this is going to be equal to 300 multiplied by that formula we learned, which is 1 plus the interest rate, 0 0.07, to the power of n, which is 20, minus 1 divided by the interest rate, 0 0.07. And so then, if we were to plug this into our calculator, we took 300 times this quantity, we would find that our future value would be equal to $12,298.65. That would be the answer to this problem. This is how much Fred has in his account after that last payment of $300 was invested. And so you can see how this was a lot quicker or a lot easier to do than to write out what we would have done in the past. We can just use this formula, or I guess I should say this formula, which will give us our answer a lot quicker.
Now, before we end this lesson, there's one more thing I want to talk about in terms of this notation here for the future value of an annuity. All right, so we have a few things that we want to keep in mind when we use that future value of an annuity notation or that formula. When we use that formula, we are assuming that the payments are of equal amount, right? Every time you're making a payment or you're making a deposit, it is the same amount for each one of those payment periods, right? So in our first example, we are paying $100 every year. In our example that we just did previously, Fred was putting $300 into his account every year. It was the same amount. That is important. That needs to be true when you're using that formula. The second thing is that those payments need to be made at equal intervals of time with the same frequency as the interest rate is compounded. And so what that means is that your payments need to be spaced apart equally, right? So every year we were making that payment of $100 in our original example, right? It wasn't $100 in a year and then $100 in a year and a half and then $100 in two years, right? It was the same period each time. We were paying $100 every year. So that has to be true. And so then the other thing that needs to be true is that that frequency of that payment cycle, right? I'm paying something every year needs to be the same as the interest rate that you were using in your formula. So since Fred was making those payments of $300 yearly, we needed to use a yearly interest rate in that formula in order to calculate his future value. If we were given a semi-annual rate instead, we would have had to convert to a yearly rate first before we could have used that formula. So it's important that the frequency of your payments is the same as the frequency of your interest rate, right? If you have yearly payments, you have to have a yearly rate. If you have semi-annual payments, you have to have a semi-annual rate and so on. That's how that formula is going to work. It does not work if those do not match up. And then finally, you have to make sure that the accumulated value that you're calculating is found at the time of and including the final payment. And so what that means is in your problem, if it's asking you to find the future value of a series of payments, make sure that it is asking you the value of that annuity or those series of payments at the end of that final payment. So you notice that in our previous example there with Fred, it asked us what was the value after the last payment was made. If it instead asked us what the value was three years after the last payment, we would have needed to adjust for that. And so that's actually what I wanna show you now because if this isn't true, we can actually adjust for it. All right, so real quickly, if we're going to use that future value notation and we wanna know what the value is at some time that's taking place after our payments are done being made, right? So for example, in our first scenario where we were making payments of $100 every year for 10 years, we had S and then 10 and our interest rate was 0 0.05 and then we multiplied this by 100. Right, this would give us the future value of that series of payments. What if we wanted to know what the future value was three years after that last payment of $100, right? The three years would be this K right here. So we're looking at the 10 years that we made those payments for plus an extra three years. Well, you couldn't just plug 13 in here, right? We're looking at a total of 13 years, but we're only making those payments of $100 up until the 10th year. And so what do we do in that scenario? Because we cannot put 13 in here because we're only making 10 payments. Well, what we can do is just take the value that this is equal to, right? If this is the future value of this annuity at the end of the 10th year, well, if we just multiply it by 1.05 to the third power, we would be bringing it forward three years, right? We would be compounding this value at the same interest rate for an extra three years. So in the event where you're interested in knowing the value of an annuity, three years or any amount of years after the last payment is made, you're going to want to multiply by one plus your interest rate to the power of how many extra years you are interested in. And so in this case, if you wanted to generalize this, you could say that the value at t equals n plus k, where n is the number of payments that are being made, it would be equal to that notation multiplied by one plus i to the power of k, where k is the amount of extra years or extra periods after your last payment was made. And so hopefully that makes sense. That is what you would do in a scenario where it wants to know the future value of a time past when your last payment was made. All right, and so that's all I had for this lesson on the future value of an annuity. If you wanna see some more example problems, feel free to check out our example video. They'll have linked at the end of this video as well as in the description. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I have for now. So I will see you next time.